Thank you, Diane, for the introduction. Kia ora koutou. So I'm going to talk about my research, which we're all doing, which is fantastic. Uh, let me just bring it up. Right. So drought-induced forest mortality is a global phenomenon that involves trees dying during dry periods. Now, recent research is showing that this is uh, an event that's increasing in prevalence across the world because as the climate changes, extreme events like drought are becoming more frequent and also more severe. So this has really big impacts uh, and consequences for our biodiversity and conservation because, as you can imagine, a dead forest doesn't support a healthy ecosystem. But there are also consequences for the carbon and water cycles because forests are so important uh, for capturing and storing carbon and they also play a really vital role in the cycling of water on a global scale. So this uh, figure here that I've uh, shown comes from a recent paper which is showing some of the research happening to understand the global situation. So there's a lot of work going on to work out uh, can we predict which forests are going to die and where and what sort of factors make trees vulnerable uh, to this type of dieback. So this paper really showed that the larger trees were more vulnerable, more, more vulnerable uh, to dieback. And uh, so that there's, there's lots of work, uh, other things going on in this space. But what's the situation here in New Zealand? Well, you can see uh, from this figure that we do have a couple of instances of forest dieback that have been recorded in the global literature. And in fact, when we look at the uh, local projections for our climate into the future, we do see that droughts will become more severe. So this figure shows uh, the percentage of time the, sorry, the percentage of extra time spent in drought uh, in certain parts of the country in 60 or more years' time. And so that dark red colour shows areas that will be spending uh, more time in drought. And so this is something that could have extensive effects across the country, and we need to understand whether this is a conservation uh, threat and what the impacts will be on our carbon budgets and also our water availability. So here in New Zealand, this is particularly important uh, because we have so many unique ecosystems and species. Of our plant species, about 80% are found nowhere else in the world. So this means that we really need to think about conserving our species, and that's where the conservation threat comes in. But we also need to think about our water availability. So in a city like Auckland that's growing rapidly, we need to think about whether we'll have enough water available in the future. And in our forested catchments, uh, will a change in climate affect the amount of water available uh, to us for human use? So my uh, research has been ongoing looking at uh, the carbon and water cycles in kauri forest. So I chose to work on kauri because they're known to be responsive to climatic conditions. So the tree ring research that's been happening over a number of decades here at the University of Auckland and other places tells us that kauri uh, really do interact or they respond to the climatic conditions. And so what I'm doing is trying to understand uh, the mechanistic processes or the physiology behind uh, those interactions. So by measuring uh, the carbon and water fluxes in the kauri forest, I'm trying to understand uh, what are the underlying uh, physiological processes going on here. So essentially uh, what we do is we uh, instrument the trees like Christmas trees and take all sorts of different measurements uh, to look at what's happening uh, in the real world. And then we can put that together with climatic information, soil moisture details, things like the evaporative demand of the air, air temperature, um, sunlight, and all of these sorts of things. And we can develop these mechanistic models to understand what is happening uh, out in the real world. So we do a combination of uh, field work and uh, modeling research. So uh, in my Marsden work, I've been doing baseline research to understand how the trees respond to the natural conditions that are happening in the world. And so I'm working at the Huapai Scientific Reserve, which is one of the university's uh, pieces of land available uh, for research. So this is a patch of remnant kauru forest, and uh, as I said, I've instrumented the trees there. And we were lucky enough to catch the summer 2013 drought within that period. So it was a really nice natural experiment. So uh, this uh, figure at the top uh, on the right here shows the soil moisture and I've highlighted that dry period where you can see the soil moisture declined significantly uh, during that time when there was very little rainfall. Mm -hmm. So we could look at uh, how the trees were responding to those conditions. 
And what we saw was that, in fact, uh, the trees had a lot of adaptations that allowed them to cope with the dry conditions. So this was really great news. So doing things like shedding their leaves meant that they could save water. Deep roots gave them access to uh, deep water stores. Uh, they had increased root biomass under drought and uh, they were able to close their leaf pores also to save water. And they also have really fantastic stem water storage. So they have this reservoir of water that they're naturally holding within their trunks. So we found a lot of evidence for really great um, adaptations to allow kauri trees in particular to survive drought periods. The next step though is to understand well what happens if we get subsequent droughts and what are the thresholds to this survival because as we all know any plant uh, will eventually die if we withhold water for long enough and we want to know what that point uh, of death will be. So this is my Rutherford Discovery Fellowship work. I'm conducting a drought simulation experiment out in the field again at the Huapai Scientific Reserve. And this approach uh, is known as a through-fall exclusion experiment. And what it involves is essentially catching rainfall before it hits the forest floor to create drought plots. And so you can see uh, in this plantation, we've got a nice layout of uh, neat rows to capture that water. It's, this is an approach that's been used in a number of places around the world, but it's the first time it'll be done here in New Zealand. And because I don't have a nice plantation, it's a messy forest, a natural system, um, taking quite a different approach. So at the moment, just in the planning phases here. But it's all about understanding what are the carbon and water consequences of ongoing and subsequent droughts and as the droughts get more severe. And it's also about defining the mortality threshold um, of the kauri trees. I just want to conclude with a plug for uh, the research reserve. So I've mentioned that I do my work at the Huapai Scientific Reserve. There are several other reserves uh, that the university owns and uh, these have been essential for my research and other ecological type studies. But there's the potential to do lots of other work uh, in uh, this, these resources. So if you want to find out more about the reserves, if you search reserves on the University of Auckland website, uh, it will take you to this homepage and you can look at uh, the details of the different reserves and there's a nice uh, little video about the reserves and the work that's happening there. And finally, I have two PhD scholarships available. I suspect not many people in the room are uh, in the market looking for a PhD scholarship, but I am interested in talking to uh, students from other parts of science, so physics and chemistry. So if you know of any students looking for a scholarship, please ask them to get in touch. Thank you.